Today I'm gonna go visit Debbie Mae West. Actually, she lives kind of like almost around the corner, so I won't be in the car for a long time Good today. Morning. Hi. <laughs> this uh, is was an attic, and these are ship stairs leading to where all the magic happens. <laughs> well, not all the magic, but the voiceover magic. Um, so just, uh, you know, as if you're getting up on a boat. Come catch the fun on the field between your Rangers and their AL West foes, the Oakland A's. <laughs> Dollar Dogs, and be sure to bring your appetite because it's a Texas Chili Company Dollar Dog Hot Dog Night. There's nothing like Rangers baseball and dollar hot dogs. So get to Globe Life Park and get ready for a fun-filled night. Find your tickets at TexasRangers.com. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that the niche in voiceover that I've, that I've been engulfed in for many, many years is promo and trailer. Uh, there, a lot of women don't actually, their voices don't make it to the trailer, but they do often give us the opportunity at least to audition for them. Uh, but promos, I, I started out many years ago, uh, I had sent out like 5,000 CDs when CDs were still a thing. And uh, HGTV got in touch with me and they asked me to get an ISDN home studio, which I did. And so for seven years, I was the voice of HGTV and because of building that home studio at the time and having ISDN capabilities, um, it just led to more and more promo. And, and then I just, you know, promo is the quickest job, you know, it can take five seconds or, you know, a, a couple minutes, um, but you do have to be readily available more so than any other gig in voiceover. And, um, and I love, I love in that, in the genre, within the genre of promo, sports promos because I've got that husky raspy voice so it's very sporty sounding so I, I I've done a lot of stuff for NFL Network over the years and ESPN and NBC Sports and the Olympic Channel and so sports is kind of my my niche within the niche if you will for 16 years I've had one gig which I think is almost unheard of in our field I, I think um, but I've been the voice of Fred Meyer which is in the Pacific Northwest for 16 years so every week I've done their, used to do all their TV and radio, now their radio commercials. Um, but that they've been my most, most loyal client. My producer and I have the same birthday. So every year I send him a cake or a pie or lunch or something up in Oregon. So this here is a video game award, Spike Video Game Award, that in 2008 I was awarded the best performance by a human female, Debbie Mae West as Meryl Silverberg. And so for Metal Gear Solid, um, I won this cute little thing. He's very interesting looking, very colorful. He matches the purple in here. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a pretty big fan base, although I don't, I don't really go to cons and sign autographs. I did one, I went to BlizzCon because I'm in the World of Warcraft series as well. And I play the Night Elf Maya of Shadow Song. Weirdly, they both, Meryl Silverberg and Maya of Shadow Song. Um, interestingly enough, two MSs and they both sound like good Jewish girls, but um, one's a very evil, gnarly night elf. And Meryl, they brought me back after 15 years. I got to do the, the, the fourth in the series of Metal Gear. And I still meet people like, you know, once in a while I'll meet someone out and about and they'll ask me what I do and, and they'll say, what game are you in? And, and there are hardcore Metal Gear fans. And when they find out I'm Meryl, they kind of freak out, which is fun. What gets you fired up to start each day? Is there a morning routine? <laughs> uh, I should have a morning routine, but I, I, my morning routine looks like a cup of coffee, one cup only, um, feeding my animals, and I might sing a little bit around the house, um, but mostly um, I'm thinking about whether I can go surfing or not before I get in the booth and start working. And, and I, I'm not, you know, I'm a new surfer, so I started late in life, but um, I do think about, like that is the thing that gets me fired up in the morning is, is the thought of, are there waves? And I check the camera and I might do a few like in between while I'm looking at the surf. I've seen three great white sharks surfing at sunset here, um, breach out of the water, because the juvenile white sharks actually um, right below Gladstones is, is where they hang out for months and months and months. So they get to be about eight feet there, the juveniles. And um, 
So I've, I've seen, I've been in the water and I've seen a shark. In fact, I surfed over a leopard shark last week. I was at Santa Monica and this couple was on and I was thinking, oh look, someone's seen my wave because I got a great wave. And I looked down and I saw this thing go right under me and I was like, that's a shark. And they were just, their mouths were open and, it, and apparently they're leopard sharks, but they don't bite. You know, I, I don't do a lot of warm up exercises um, it, it, unless my my voice feels strained or a little bit hoarse. I have a very weak voice, and I do if I if I'm having too much fun or if I'm in a loud place talking to people, like at a party of some sort or at a bar or restaurant, and I'm talking for several hours, my voice gets strained. So in those mornings, I might have to have a lozenge you know, in my mouth just to get a little moisture going. Um, but I'm not a big tea drinker. If I'm sick, I'll, you know, I never get sick, but if I'm sick, uh, <laughs> I will do some throat coat tea. Uh, I, I have been known to take singing lessons here and there. And uh, when I, I did, you know, I had my vocal injury, I had to do voiceover lessons at that point for a while, uh, or singing lessons. But that's about it. Have you had a voiceover job that changed your life? Yes, indeed. When I started out, I was a singer. I wanted to be a rock star. That was my dream. And um, in my early 20s, I became a very um, religious Buddhist. And for 25 years of my life, I was a very hardcore Buddhist in a, in a large world peace organization. And, um, and I was very devoted and I had a lot of struggles with my voice. And so because I was a perfectionist at music, I, I wasn't going to sing unless I was a great, amazing singer. So I stopped singing and uh, I, well, I was in a, while I was still in a band, um, Pamela Siegel used to come and hear my band. And I would always ask her, you know, how do you, how do you get into that voiceover thing? Because she was doing voiceovers at the time and she was also an actor. I'd seen her in some films. And she said, oh, it's so hard. There's, you know, it's a small niche group of people. This is back in the 90s. And, um, and then somehow I found my way into the field. I had an agent. I wasn't really booking yet. I was really, I was trying. But my first big job was actually doing her voice on 101 Dalmatians cartoon series. And I played Lucky. And she got pregnant and left. It wasn't, she didn't get fired or anything. And she, uh, but she left the show so she could have a kid. And I matched her voice. And, and that really, you know, threw me into the world of animation at that time. Actually, in the same day, I booked a Ford national commercial, television commercial, one with the talking dogs. And I booked that series both in the same day. So I was shopping in Nordstrom and I got this call from, you know, Celia Siegel. You, you're, you got Pamela's voice. I never thought I could match her voice. She asked me to do it and I said, I can't. She said, just try. And then, and then a couple minutes later, I got another call. You just booked a national forward spot. And I, I mean, it changed my life forever. So I was a waitress and then I wasn't ever again. <laughs> <laughs> my whole life I had this Disneyland dream, re recurring dream. Cause I grew up here in Los Angeles and uh, my mom's uh, she worked for the union, the grocery union, and they used to get to rent Disneyland every every September for four nights. And so I grew up, I went to Disneyland hundreds and hundreds of times. It was kind of like my place where I really like formulated creativity and I was, I was just a Mickey Mouse freak. And um, so I had this reoccurring dream that I couldn't get on Space Mountain, which was my favorite ride. And so when I, when I booked that Disney cartoon, I had the dream and I got on the ride. Yeah, it was pretty funny. With everyone in their voiceover booth at home, mm -hmm. how can we stay engaged with the voiceover community and each other? I have really noticed since most people are ha have vocal booths in their houses that it's much harder to stay engaged. When I when I first got on the scene, we would, you know, I would have. 10 to 15 auditions at my agent's office, which never happens anymore. And I would go to Calvinson and Calvinson, voice caster, Elaine Craig, back to voice caster. I mean, we would have like five or an animation job at Warner Brothers, uh, audition at Warner Brothers. You know, I was out and about and there was a specific community of people at that time in the, in the 90s and maybe in the beginning of, of the 2000s. What do you call that? 
era, 2000s, the 20s. Um, the turn of the century. The turn of the century, right? We lived at the turn of the century. That's amazing. So, and we knew each other and we, you know, had friends in the community. And, and now also because I live in Venice and I'm at home working every day and not really driving around at all, I rarely see people. And so I don't really talk to a lot of people in the voiceover community at all, besides you right now. <laughs> and when we ran into each other, actually, I go to Promax every year. It's a, it's um, Promax is a is a conference that everything promo uh, happens at. So all the all all the, the networks are there, and all the promo producers are there, and the and agents and some voiceover people. It's not really a voiceover thing, but I go because I do a lot of promo, so I get to meet some of the people that I never meet in person. Interestingly enough, New York is still kind of like the old days. You still you still go around to casting offices there. Um, so, you know, I just I just really try to have a little list of people and then and then you bring a little swag and meet people. I actually uh, one year <laughs> I I brought little purple flashlight vibrators and they were keychains and they said um, vibrate your soul wmaywest.com and uh, Celia Siegel who's a she's a, a voice of our branding and marketing manager uh, she and I went around because I couldn't do it alone but she came up with the idea and she's like you're bold enough to do this and we went around Promax and I would walk up to someone at a party and, and say have you been vibrated yet and it was a hit and people the next year saw, sought me out and said do you have any more of those cool vibrators and they were really funny they were little flashlights but they vibrated and it was a it was a little gimmick and it, it got me a lot of work actually I'm trying to figure out what gimmick I'll do this year because I don't I'm not that bold any longer in my in my older age to bring a, a vibrator you might know my voice if you live here in Los Angeles or if you're a fan of KCRW I was on a show called a series called um, Joe Frank the other side and I told I told private stories about my my personal life to him and he edited them and I was really good friends with Joe Frank and he would record our television our, our, our telephone conversations and I mostly you know spoke to him like almost like a girlfriend and I was talking about relationships because he would take real life stories and edit them together and um, and then write his own pieces and he had edit this one hour uh, radio hour you know people you sit sit and listen to the radio and he kind of kept that genre going and he had some pretty racy stories of mine on there um, very revealing and he he just passed away a couple of months ago very very sadly um, but I, I feel like that getting having that opportunity to use my voice in that way was really really special and and um, he does have a, a huge fan base, and so I'm, I'm really proud that I got to be part of that series.